Okay guys, I finished up uh, grinding all the piston rings, um, fitting the end gaps like we covered in the last video. Uh, went through every cylinder, kept the rings numbered per cylinder. A um, couple things I wanted to touch on. Uh, I used a little diamond hone just to deburr after I grind the rings. I, I use a little diamond hone just to deburr the edges just slightly so there's no burrs to hang up in the in the ring grooves or to score the cylinder walls or anything like that. Um, second little thing is I uh, found a little trick. Um, I was using the piston to seat the rings down in the bore. Uh, you see a lot of guys doing this uh, but you'll see them put like the bottom ring on and use the use the ring to set the set the depth. Um, I don't like doing that. I used I used uh, the basically the bottom of the the top of the piston here, um, and that ended up being right at about an inch. And the reason I don't like to use the uh, the bottom ring is that it doesn't seat the ring far enough down in the bore. Um, a lot of guys will just measure it. It's only, you know, I, I, it seats it, what, maybe three-eighths to a half inch down in the bore. And you want to be closer to about an inch, typically. Um, and the reason for that is that's, that's where peak cylinder pressure usually happens in the stroke. Um, so at that point after TDC, as the, as the piston's going through its cycle, you're going to reach peak cylinder pressure as the piston's coming down and as that that uh, you know that combustion event is taking place um, and about an inch down in the bore is probably more likely than right at the top of the bore unless you're getting some sort of detonation or pre-ignition which isn't a good thing anyway um, so that's the reason you want to set those a little deeper in the bore if your cylinders are dead nuts true uh, it's not really going to matter but um, you know just for safety's sake that's what what, what I try to do is you know, set it, set it a little bit farther down in the bore. And that is actually what uh, Molly recommends when, when grinding their, their rings is one inch down in the bore. So um, just wanted to touch on that a little bit. Uh, besides that, I'm still waiting on bearings. They should be here tomorrow. A uh, couple other things. Uh, a couple of you more, uh, I guess, observant guys have watched a couple videos and uh, noticed a couple things sitting around the shop. We got this. First thing is this guy. So this is a wastegate, I believe, um, that I found years ago and it was advertised, I got it on eBay actually, and it was advertised as a Formula One uh, takeoff, like a 1980s Formula One wastegate. And I haven't been able to find anything about this thing, but it is a really trick part. It's got like a 3D billet stainless part underneath, everything's safety wired. Um, you know, it, it definitely looks, looks the part. I, this is real thin, but I, I, I'm guessing it's ink and all. Um, and then, you know, the valve design is really trick for flow and the way that housing's designed. It's a really neat part. Um, I don't know if it's an aircraft part or if it actually is off some sort of formula, formula car application. Uh, if you guys know anything about this, let me know. Because it's pretty rad. I've actually used it in the past as a blow-off valve. I re-sprung it um, to work you know, in the right pressure range of a blow-off valve, and uh, and it works pretty well for that. Um, mainly, I was concerned about this valve because I think it it's uh, I think it's probably aluminum, but it might might be some other other trick material. But it looks like anodized aluminum. Um, so I wasn't sure I wanted to try to use it as a wastegate. Uh, but if you anybody any of you guys know more about that, let us all know because that is a really cool piece. Anyway, um, the other thing, the other thing a couple of you guys have noticed is uh, the little 
3D printed intake that I have on this head. This is something I was designing. Um, this is a prototype that I 3D printed. Uh, this, this version would be a uh, dual injector, so two injectors per cylinder uh, setup. Uh, lots of taper in the port, fairly short runner. Um, but I think with this project, I'm going to try to build a few different uh, intake manifold designs and see what works best. Um, so this, this might be one. This was designed to be a billet, a complete billet manifold. Uh, but I think I'm going to do some fabricated manifolds and possibly even use uh, one of the... Uh, the AEB manifolds and just cut it up and see what I can do with it. Um, but we are going to play with that. We are going to build a header for this. Uh, I'll show you how to do that using my uh, my collector cutting tool and then go go through how to, how I go through building a header and uh, all that stuff and then uh, kind of some other fabrication, aluminum fabrication and and maybe do some billet parts and, and this and that. But uh, anyway, uh, until tomorrow when I get bearings, I guess that's it for today. I'll talk to you guys soon.